dear people of the internet, I'm Jontje, I'm autistic. And well, actually, I have no idea if I sound autistic or not. Um, I kind of assume I don't because, uh, well, I can tell I'm doing some kind of prosody, although it's usually not what I intended to do. Um, but it's an awesome video title and, vid and you know, titling is kind of hard. So, yeah. Um, but, I mean, as I said, I know I do, I'm doing some kind of prosody, which is the fancy linguistic word, which if you are maybe new to this channel and have not heard me rant about linguistics uh, for, well, a lot of time, um, I study linguistics, so yeah. And, well, prosody is actually just a very fancy word for, you know, the things, the, 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 the tone, I guess. You know, whether your voice is going up or down or what, yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and whether it's getting lou louder or not, or, you know, that, basically. Stuff that is... Stuff that does not have to do with words. There probably is a better explanation for that. I'm sorry. I, uh, I'm not very good with words today. And on that note, I should probably also explain that prosody is used by neurotypical people to get information about the speaker's emotions, or know when to start or stop speaking and various other things like that which neurotypical people apparently know when they have a conversation yeah um but yeah i do some kind of prosody i imagine i think i perceive when i edit these videos but it's usually the intention is usually it's it's copied from sort of TV or m m more likely YouTube because I watch more YouTube than TV, uh, which I guess is kind of obvious since I make YouTube videos. Anyway, um, and usually I it's just copied and I have no idea what it actually means to you know neurotypical people, um, and it's just kind of sounds cool to me, but. Uh, also, at the same time, uh, the prosody that I think I'm doing in my head is actually not the one that I'm apparently actually doing and that I perceive, you know, again, when I edit these videos, which is very interesting. And I did not know that before I started a YouTube channel. So, you know, sometimes filming yourself while talking is a very interesting thing to do. Um, And usually the prosody I do is actually a lot less than I think I'm doing. In my brain there's a lot more and for some reason it just doesn't actually happen. I don't really know why to be honest. It just it doesn't. <laughs> but of course I I guess kind of, I've talked about this a lot in another, you know, my talking is hard video. I'm just doing endless linguistics videos now because I don't know. Special interests, I guess. Um, and, but since, you know, all the prosody and everything is copied from somewhere and I have actually no idea what it means, we just, I mean, it's very fun. It's kind of funny to me because and that was actually also the idea for this video because I am doing an entire, you know, semester course on prosody while not being able to understand prosody. It's very interesting, but also, you know, we get exercises to produce specific meanings and I'm just like, I perceive from the things that I've learned that it, this might be considered to sound like this, but I have actually no idea. That's like literally what all my homework sounds like. But for some reason they're, I don't know. I think the, 
yeah the professors are aware that i'm autistic so they're probably like yeah okay <laughs> uh, i don't know if i don't know it seems to be all right no one has told me it's wrong yet so <laughs> i mean you know when i hear other people talk i can usually i can perceive that they're doing something and actually i recently found um, a report about a study that found that autistic people are actually more sensitive to changes in in the oh i guess in the frequency we just call it f0 but how do you call it how do you explain to people who are not linguists um the melody basically the basic sort of melody of that artistic people are actually, actually better at that but because they are better at perceiving the differences they can sort of get the overall picture pic pic picture pic picture wow um which sort of you know is kind of why many have difficulty reading prosody and you know meanings that are intended but not expressed in words <laughs> which is very interesting to me <laughs> but you know when i perceive other people talking i can hear that they're doing something and sometimes i'm like yes that sounds very interesting i would like to be able to speak like that as well um but i don't usually know what sort of emotion it's supposed to be and if i would guess i would be wrong a lot which is why i usually either try to infer from context or just refrain from guessing but i mean what's really interesting to me about this and about the fact that i do prosody but I don't actually know what it means and I, it's just randomly copied is it's it's kind of I, it is how i want to speak but it intrigues me whether that is part of masking or not because well to be honest i would say that in a way speaking is always masking because speaking at least with words is not exactly natural for me i would always have to sort of i always sort of have to force myself to speak so obviously any prosody that i would do would also be masking but it is not a conscious masking it's it's not like oh i need to speak like this because other people think that is how one is supposed to speak it's i think that sounds cool and since i want to express myself i would like to express myself that way i guess that's sort of interesting and i don't really know when i would be very interested if anyone else how other artist artistic people experience pro prosody in particular but speaking in general the masking parts that pertain to speaking i guess yeah but i mean i guess sort of in, in, in at some point you get into like what actually is genuine and sort of authentic because in the end this is getting very philosophical but i've read a, a wonderful and sadly it's not in english but I, i'll see if there's an english translation that i can link in the description uh, a, a wonderful yeah what is it article very small book um about yeah ambiguity in the end and how we as a society uh oh, oh this is getting philosophical um have kind of become less tolerant of ambiguity and we sort of have or we as western society that is of course sort of european i can only really speak from a european standpoint to be honest um but we've sort of become less accepting of ambiguity and therefore i've sort of developed a kind of obsession with authenticness in which i sort of 
in in a way also see this idea of artistic masking i'm not saying artistic masking doesn't exist but it is i would say influenced by that sort of obsession with authenticness because in the end people just humans or the, the author of that particular piece of written work that I'm referencing right now makes the point that actually people by the nature of being people have what's it called things that don't fit together things that are yeah ambiguous and things that are they are sort of ambiguous and they have no it's not contrasting but something like that they are not uniform as a person not like uniform as in every person is the same but uniform as in a sort of person without hold on let me check a word people by the nature of being i have it now people by the nature of being people are uh, have contradictions because they're people <laughs> that is the point he makes in the end and sort of he claim, claims and i think it's a very interesting notion uh and i would in a certain way agree with him at least to, to some degree that the idea of authenticness sort of goes against the idea that people can be contradictory beings because authenticness would require one to have no, no contradictions within one's personality which i would say is probably not the case for most human beings and therefore you know what is authentic expression really or in a way it doesn't exist it exists because well it sort of exists and isn't it, it is ambiguous in itself because there can be a very obvious not authentic way of expressing oneself and so on but in the end but in a way that also can't it it, it can't exist but it can be more existent or existent or less existent. <laughs> this is a very ambiguous, it's, it's ambiguous. I think that's the point, but um, I need my text. I don't actually have this part written down. And also this video has taken a major detour from what I wanted it to be, but I have, have had a lot of fun so far uh, trying to explain this. Um, but yeah in, in a way you know masking i might make a separate video on this but the, the idea of sounding artistic or not sounding artistic or masking the sounding artis artistic or not in the end why you know the idea of sounding artistic is that there's some sort of end masking as it pertains to speaking is that there is some sort of authentic artistic voice but that in a way can't really exist I guess is the point is that the point of this video the point of this video was something very different this is just fascinated intellectual musing I guess something like that but I think I will end this video here and I might continue this three stream of thought in another video uh, if enough people enjoy it or not because I just enjoyed it and if you have managed to maybe follow or not or at least managed to watch this video until here I commend you for your I don't know for something i could just commend you and you know you can 
you are welcome to commemorate your effort with liking this video or if you haven't already subscribing to my YouTube channel, I guess. Um, and I will hope to see you next week with another probably hopefully less rambly video. Goodbye.